Okay, I'll get you left. We are going to get started. I have the privilege of introducing, and I have my official card so that I get everything correct. So, uh, Ted is presenting a 60 PowerPoint slide of the nooks and crannies, not English muffins, <laughs> but the nooks and crannies of our church. This presentation should take 30 to 35 minutes. And Ted has put it all together with the help of Larry Hoffman and Bob DeLoss and Dave Smith. They have been in and out of the church for months, taking pictures and videos and, and getting themselves into places they probably shouldn't have been. <laughs> but it's all for our benefit. Uh, the presentation will include some church history about the parish house, the parish house, the CE building, and the stone church. It will end with photos. So this is like a spoiler alert. They will end with photos inside the bell tower. So I, I think I have spoken enough. So with no further ado, and we want to thank Ted, Dave, and Larry and Bob for all they did to put this together. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, and welcome uh, to the presentation of the nooks and crannies of the Presbyterian Church. Um, I want to first uh, thank uh, my assistants, uh, Ed Smith, Bob Lodge, and Larry Bachman. And with their help, uh, I was able to put a presentation, a PowerPoint presentation here this morning. And um, what happens when people um, reach middle age. They have developed a bucket list of things that they want to see or do before they die. Now, when I retired, I had a list of over a hundred items that uh, I wanted to see. Um, I was talking to Bob the Lost last year. And I told him I was down to the last one. And that item was to see the bell in the bell tower, church bell tower. Uh, he said that he'd like to see the bell also. So we grabbed our cameras and took pictures of the bell and the tower. And they will be included at the end of the program. I want to start by making sure that we're all on the same uh, page. So I'm going to define what a nook and cranny is. And 
the old cemetery. Now I'm told that Turfan Kirkman gave the village green and the cemetery to Poland Township in 18, in his will. But back then, there was no village. It was a township. And the township had trouble maintaining the green and the cemetery. So when the village of Poland was incorporated in 1866, two things happened. One was that they made a survey and all the properties were given lot numbers. The second thing was that the Poland Township turned over their uh, lease or their uh, ownership of the green and the cemetery to the uh, village. Now what's interesting is that the cemetery came before the church. Uh, the church started in 1802 in a log cabin on the village green. In 1828, they decided to build a frame, a wooden church. And the dimensions of that church was approximately the width of this fellowship hall and from the back. And in 1844, the wooden church, or frame church, had a pastor by the name of Kuhn, C-O-O-N. And he purchased a lot from uh, Henry Kirtland, who was the son of Turhan Kirtland. In 1865, when the village was incorporated, the property owners were assigned lot numbers. And the lot numbers started out <coughs> at the parish house, uh, lot number one. The church was lot number two. And the large what we call the Tur Turhan Kirtman House was lot three. And the numbers went up Main Street on the west side and came down on the east side. And you will see Basically, 
what it is now. A nice sun porch on the south end of the house. Uh, I think there were something like six bedrooms, two baths, living room, dining room, and servants' quarters in the attic. Attached to the house was a garage or carriage house. And above the carriage house was more, uh, was an apartment probably inhabited by the chauffeur who, there are in a three car garage that in the, in the background you can see it better in the next photo. There's the, uh, in the center of the picture is the garage. Uh, between the church and, and the parish house, there was a 20 foot easement where Presbyterians could drive their buggies to the back of the church. And many of the congregations built uh, sheds for their horses uh, in what's now a parking area. In 1955, the congregation decided that they would build an education building between the parish house and the church. In order to do that, they had to move the garage uh, from, its pre from its old position, which is in red, the red uh, garage, and they moved it to the back of the parking lot. On the parking lot was also a Boy Scout house or barn, and they moved that uh, next to the uh, carriage shop, carriage house, and uh, connected the two with a new construction. And This was the result. On the left is the top of the garage. In the center is the new, new kitchen. And to the right is the scout house. Back in 1988, 86, we had an interim pastor by the name of Bob Lance. Uh, who was a painter. And this is Reverend Lance's concept of what the Presbyterian Church looked like in 1988. Uh, on the right is the Stone Church. The center is the Education Building and on the left is the parish house. We'll start by exploring the parish house, which was first used as an office and Sunday school room. It has a basement first and second floor and an attic. This is an, a photograph of the entrance of the parish house. On the left is a nice little nook uh, with uh, two rocking chairs. Um, to the left of the entrance and 
The parish house has a center stairway which leads to the second floor. And on the landing you will see a stained glass window, which is very common for houses back in 1916. As you enter the house, on the left is, was the living room, which is now the pastor's office. And the door in the back of the, uh, beside the fireplace, they lead out into the sunroom. Sun porch, which is off of the pastor's study. And, uh, Paul, you use it sometimes for conferences. Not here. <clears throat> sometimes for meetings. Yeah. On the right, as you enter the parish house, was the dining room, which had been converted into the church office. And there's two doors that lead back to the kitchen. <coughs> this is a photograph of the kitchen today. It's been modernized uh, somewhat, but the, I believe that the cabinets are original. In um, about 1958, on Easter, my wife and I were in charge of the nursery. And during the church service, we had nine babies in the kitchen here, uh, laying on the floor. Two of them were our children. <laughs> <laughs> on the, I'm standing on the second floor here, looking at the, the stained glass window. It's a little better view of the stained glass windows. And if I turn around and I will see or you will see what's called the history room. And I've asked Dave Smith if he would please tell us a little bit about the church history room. Dave? Hi. I don't need my History room, by the way, is above Paul Anderson's office. You the steps. Next to Denny Sierra's office. <clears throat> Here's a whole list of all the things in there. I'm not going to read the whole list of you, but among the things in there are biographies of the early ministers of Poland Presbyterian Church, the church history. Uh, I have a notebook called In Memoriam, where I've kept obituaries, trying to keep them up to date, since around late uh, 2010. So if you want to reminisce about some of the, the members who are no longer with us, their obituaries are in there. We have all the church histories going back to 1927. There's five different histories of the church that have been written. We have the pictorial directories back to 1966. And there's about six of those that have been made and I have copies of. Uh, we have photos of the early Sunday school, the early sanctuary before the renovations were done. There's a huge picture of the floor being miss missing and walking down into the basement. Uh, we have a, a history of the Poland Presbyterian Church Preschool and uh, annual reports that go way back uh, to uh, 1952. And a list of other things, but I won't tell you all of them. But please feel free to go in there anytime and just sit and browse around. Uh, just don't take things out. <laughs> uh, I was looking at my watch to see how we're going on time. Uh, <coughs> Down the hall on the second floor on the north end is a meeting room. And adjacent to the meeting room is a stairway that leads up to the attic. We believe that the attic was servants' quarters. It's decorated now, I understand, and used by the college students. On either side 
of the attic room here, you might see uh, the, on the borders of the picture, there are little doors, and those doors lead into a, um, I guess you'd call it a, a cranny. It's a storage area uh, in the attic. At one time, it was um, filled with um, memorabilia, church memorabilia, <laughs> and it's been clean, cleaned out recently. And uh, this is the way it looks today. Now, I'm looking from south to north. Um, okay. In order to get to the basement, you have to go through the education building uh, near the elevator. elevator. There's a door that leads into this labyrinth of rooms in the basement. Um, on the right is the uh, hot water heater that uh, uh, for the parish house only, and there are uh, other workbenches there, uh, and it's also a storage area for uh, <coughs> tools used around the church. Well, oh, what was interesting uh, when I went down into the basement, I found a door leading into what was, is the coal bin, which is under the front porch. And at the corner, north corner of the porch is a manhole. And on the right here, you will see an opening going up to the driveway. The manhole would be opened up and the coal would come down uh, into the coal bin. On the left, it's kind of hard to see, but the sides of the coal bin are sloped to the center of the door. So the coal would slide uh, to the front of the, uh, to the door of the coal bin. Quite innovative. I've never seen slope uh, wall on a coal, coal bin. Uh, before I get too far, I, I left something out here. I'm going to go back. Uh, if I'm going back. Isley 
bought the house, and she lived there until 1948. Mrs. Isley was the wife of the founder of the Isley Company in Youngstown, Ohio. Her husband uh, was despondent and uh, killed himself uh, at, at the age of 33. In that big U-Haul building in Youngstown, on the third floor? He killed himself in his office. Electric organ 
And in order to have an electric organ, you had to have electricity. So uh, it was warped with electricity. Uh, before that, they had gas lights, uh, chandeliers. Over here on the right is a storage room that was built uh, to, for the tables and chairs that you're sitting on. They store the chairs in there. And in that room is a bell rope. That bell rope comes all the way down to, from the tower to the bell that's attached, and you'll see that later. Uh, you pull on that rope, and it rings the bell. Over here, on your left, behind this wall, directly behind this wall, is a storage area that contains three kitchen freezers plus a pantry. Next to the pantry is the kitchen. Most of you are familiar with the refrigerator, the microwave, uh, I, I don't know how many burners, six burners, uh, sinks, a warming table, and on the right, behind the stove, is a doorway that leads outside and also to the boiler room for the old stone church. In the kitchen is a dishwasher. It's a monster. And, uh, and you have to be a uh, computer scientist uh, to understand how to operate marvelous piece of engineering. It was donated by Jack uh, Brown. Behind this wall is what I call the bride's room. It's a little room uh, where uh, young brides can, before the wedding can uh, dress, change their dresses, and uh, put on their makeup before they go up the stairs into the sanctuary. The bride room contains a bathroom as you can see through the mirror there. On the, above the bride room going up the stairway, you come to the former choir room and um, uh, the doors on the left lead to the air condition uh, air conditioners that operate uh, nine, ten months out of the year. And humidity control for the organ. This is the pipe organ that was installed in 1999. It sits in the choir law. The pipe organs in the choir law were installed in 1999 uh, at a cost of $400,000. Behind the pipes are uh, a maze of switches and, and, and air ducts. <coughs> there is uh, the metal uh, pipes replaced the old wooden pipes. In 1970, what was six, we replaced the, uh, we replaced the wooden organ and for 20 years we had uh, the electric organ and then
parlor, a little kitchen.
Porter from Troy, New York, to Youngstown, and was erected in, for three years in the Brain Church Tower. Forty years it rang in the Brick Church, and for 122 years it has been in the this present stone church. To get to the bell tower required uh, climbing up to the first platform, uh, which is 12 feet above the main sanctuary, and then another 22 feet to the uh, top of the tower where the bell is installed. Uh, I can't imagine raising and lowering that bell uh, as many times as they did. The bell weighs over a ton uh, of metal bronze. And uh, to get that bell up into the tower is a major engineering feat. Uh, in 2012, Dave Smith took these pictures of the first platform. Dave, can you tell what to? How briefly, on the back, you see a gas heater. For a while, a person was up there, especially on Sunday mornings. And on the right, you see, the picture on the right, up to the left, there's a picture of a bell. On that bell is written, I can't remember the exact numbers, but like 9 o'clock, 3 rings. 9.30, 5 rings, 10.30, 10 rings, to tell people when it's time to get ready to get to church. And they heard it all over town, of course. There's a little bench in there where a person sat, a little spittoon bucket there to use. I also found in there a script for a play, and in it, it had the cues marked for the lighting for the play. So I don't know if he was doing that from up there, or had just left it up there, or not, but quite interesting group. And some old things were left on the floors up there too. Ray Pavelko and I went up there to explore because I think the rope had broken. You know, we were looking at replacing the rope. We didn't do it. John Hines did. I mean, he and Ray Pavelko. Dave. Yeah. Dave Shepard was telling me
to uh, get the bell up into the tower. And on the right are the carillon speakers, which broadcast every hour uh, the Westminster Chimes. Uh, this rope that is down here in the uh, Fellowship Hall, the other end of the rope is tied to this wheel. When you pull the rope here, uh, it rocks. It uh, rocks this wheel, which then is attached to the bell. And that's how you bring the bell. You pull down, turns the wheel, and the bell rings. Well, I guess that the 